All right, all right, all right. Coach, great game, your thoughts. How about them flashes? How about that resolve? How about finding a way to score one more point than them from the first play to the last play? It's a heck of a job by the guys showing some real grit, real resolve, what they've shown all year long. Um, I mean, just a tremendous group of young men with really, really hot character. And we talked about it on Thursday that the character of all those seniors and the guys who have been here since day one need to show up. And if that resolve, that fight and the character of our team, you know, came to play the way that they did, um, you know, we got a chance. And obviously we, we came out on top, found a way to score one more point than them. And that's all that matters at this point. And, uh, you know, next Saturday I'm going to be in Detroit. Hope to see you all there. <laughs> Take a line down. Some questions for Coach? What's that locker room like after? It was jubilant. It was uh, exciting. It was a lot of fun. Um, you know, guys have put in a ton of work. A lot of guys who came here from the very, very beginning, you know, for this moment, and uh, they made it a reality through their hard work and really, really special. Um, Dr. Montre, and he didn't like to feel like, I mean, I'm a little surprised that they went for two in that situation. He didn't act like really all that surprised. You guys are kind of thinking that might happen. Yeah, I think the way that the new overtime rules, you know, are kind of played out now, right? Like after the first inning, so to speak, you have to go for two. So in that situation, in that course of the game, it felt like they had some momentum. Obviously, the fourth down stop, that thing goes in there. And so, you know, we're kind of going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So, you know, Coach Martin decided that, hey, let's let's take a shot. And, uh, you know, our boys came out on top. Yeah, I mean, it's just a heck of a job, heck of an individual effort, um, you know, to, to strain and, again, to compete. I mean, he wasn't in an ideal position, but, I mean, the, the resiliency, the attitude, the effort to go make a play on the ball and to get it down to the ground. And I mean, I didn't believe it until it hit the ground and it was done, you know. And then you got to look up and, all right, that actually happened. And, and I shoot, I think I turned around, Sam Allen was right behind me, lifted me off my feet, and then he put me down and Big A picked me up. And just to share those moments with those guys, I mean, that's stuff that, you know, by the end of this thing, probably in 50 years, we'll have won by 20 points, but those moments will – We'll, we'll, we'll never go away, sharing those hugs, seeing those tears, and then, you know, finding the, the family. I, I was good. I, I, was, I was pretty tough until I saw the little ones and, uh, you know, share it with them. Um, I mean, it's just it, – it's awesome. It, it's truly awesome to go all in on something, to kind of go out on that limb and um, to sacrifice and to come out on the right side. It's big time. Um, matchup going in, number one offense, number one yeah, I mean, I think at the end of the day, looking at it here, we had uh, 339 yards passing. We had 303 yards rushing. We had 32 first downs. Um, you know, we're a balanced attack. Our, our kids are unselfish. They have tremendous resiliency. And, um, you know, week in and week out, however we need to get it done, whether it's run or pass or both, our kids find a way. Old line again, played phenomenal. I mean, that, that front four that they have is one of the best in the league. And the way that our five kids played together cohesively and the job that Coach O'Boyle's done with all the different units up there. I know, I know the, the skill and the skinnies, you know, they get the headlines and they get the flashes. But, man, the big guys up front made everything happen. And, um, you know, to rush for 303 yards, as we've talked about a bunch, Alan, right? Like our plan to win, we, we got to run the ball. And uh, we found a way to do that against a really good team. Kind of. Yeah, man, we knew it was going to be a challenge, you know, and we knew that we had to kind of distribute the ball and maybe soften the edges a little bit by doing that and equate some numbers in the box because of their scheme, which is really sound with really good people. So, you know, it, it kind of worked in that way to where we probably threw it a little bit more early on um, based off the looks that we were given. Um, but then, you know, to increase those big runs that, that X had. And um, I mean, it's just a tremendous job about the kids, again, to be resilient, to be tough and not to be denied and to find a way you know, to execute that phase of our plan to win. Um, talk about Dustin real quick. I mean, he throws a few interceptions with really kind of strange plays, but yet him throwing interceptions was crazy in the first quarter. <laughs> and then obviously, he comes back pretty well. Obviously. Yeah. I, I mean, he, he's such a resilient kid. And, and, you know, his demeanor, never too high, never too low when good things happen. I mean, he, he doesn't overreact, you know, when, when – Things go his way, right? He doesn't overreact when things don't go his way. The first one's on me. It's a bad play call. It's bad design. And, and 82 made a heck of a play tipping that thing. Um, you know, and the second one's kind of a fluke play. Um, you know, so, again, though, like, he does such a good job of their moments in time. You know, like, it, it, he's almost stoic in his approach to where I throw a touchdown. Okay, cool. Like that's, that's neat, right? I throw an interception. Uh -huh. All right, that's done. And he just keeps going and learning from each one and, and stays the course. And again, I mean, ultimately his efficiency, you know, he's 25 for 34, you know, we're average 10 yards per pass. Um, 
you know, and again, the interceptions, I'll, I'll take the touchdowns, the interception ratios that he's accumulated over his career. If we can replicate that, I'm going to be all right. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's everything. Again, it's the resiliency and the character of this ball club that in all three phases we needed plays, had to have moments, you know, those, those gotta have it moments and the moments of truth. And, and I got some tremendous trust in our kids, which is what we're going to go for on fourth and one. And we're going to do that every single time because I believe in our kids. And it doesn't matter which phase of the game is out there. I have confidence that our kids are going to get it done. And again, the defensive staff did a great job putting together a simple plan that the kids could execute with conviction. And maybe it wasn't even the, you know, the perfect call, so to speak, but the kids just played with great effort and they got such pride and such character to find a way to get it done. It wasn't always pretty. Shoot, that's life. It ain't always going to be that way. It ain't going to be perfect, but you know, you just dust yourself off. You keep on trucking. You play the next play. And uh, I, I mean, I, there's so many senior leaders on that side of the ball. That I can't wait to see what they do because of the character and the resolve that they show in this game. I know they're going to be successful in life, which is really cool. One more for me. Um, other than the obvious plays, the MVP was that uh, there's so many plays. What kind of pops into your head is really turning points for that game? I think getting points at the end of the first half was obviously huge. And, and the thing that really stood out was the opportunistic stops. And then when we needed to go get a score and respond, you know, to where they scored and we answered with a score right away, you know, so that was kind of the, the tone of the second half to me that really kind of jumps out without, you know, seeing it per se. But I mean, you know, you're, you're sitting there and okay, it gets to a three point game and we hit the slant to Keyshawn. <laughs> it's like, you know, we're talking as a staff, like, hey, let's slow the game down, take some air out of it. And then, boom, he goes for however many yards it was. It's like, all right, well, we'll take that too. You know, so just that, again, the result, the, the, the championship traits of this team to where they're undefeated at home, they, they, they are a resilient group, like we've talked about early in the year, even those Power Five games, you know, they fought to the very end, you know, which prepared us for these moments. They made us train for these moments. And then the resolve and the character to go answer a score with a score to not flinch. And uh, what really stood out to me throughout the whole second half was the communication and the, the, the encouragement that was on our boundary between both phases. There was, there was no BCD. There was no blaming, complaining, or defending bad behavior, right? It was just, hey, we got you. No problem. Like, make the corrections, whatever phase of the game it was, like, we got you. And that's what a family does, you know? So that was really, really cool. Let's move it over to Ryan from Cleveland.com. Ryan, any questions for Coach? Yeah, Coach. Now back-to-back -back weeks, emotional wins. Like, what does it say about this team that you guys were able to come back? Like you said last week that you didn't think you guys have a problem coming back after the emotional win last week against Akron to play this game. What does it say about, you keep talking about the resolve of this team, but what does it say about this team to be able to bounce back both weeks? I think it just shows how disciplined the group is. You know, like when, when we talk about discipline, we say that like that's the shortcut for what we want, right? So, so for them to have the emotional maturity, the competitive maturity and the discipline to know that, yeah, hey, the wagon wheel game is a really big game, no doubt. I mean, that, that's checking off one of our goals and to keep that thing home for 365. And we went and celebrated that thing the right way, you know, and then, hey, 24 hours later, like, that's great, but it doesn't matter. We got to get better because we got a really good Miami team coming in. And again, the, the emotional maturity, the competitive maturity, the, the discipline through the highs and lows of this game to where, shoot, the second play of the game, we throw an interception, the defense goes, okay. So what now? What we're out? Let's hold them to a field goal. Like that sudden change stop. Like that's huge. All right. I mean, like if, if we give up a touchdown there, we're not passing out cigars and having a great time talking about going to Detroit. And again, it's like all those moments within the game because of the discipline and our kids buying into the cultural training that we've done ever since January 2018 when I stood in front of the team for the very first time. That hey, you know, discipline's the shortcut. It, it may take four years to get us to where we want to go. But I promise you, if we're disciplined the majority of the time, we're going to get there a heck of a lot faster if we're just all over the place. Last question for me is, they scored, take it to overtime. You guys had a two-possession lead most of the second half. What was the message right before overtime started, especially when you know you're getting the ball first? Yeah, I mean, there really wasn't a whole lot of time to say anything. And that's where our kids being trained for the moment and ready to go per perform – the way that we always talk about, you know, it, there, there wasn't a whole lot that needed to be said. It was, hey, here's what we're going to run. Let's go execute. Let's go get it done, right? And then, shoot, we score. We get the, the, the PAT field goal. And then a play later, hey, they're going for two. Hey, let's get a stop. 
again, like it, it's that it, it's just like kind of on to the next, on to the next play, right? Like clear it, refocus it good or bad, clear it, refocus and let's play this play. Cause it's the most important thing. It's the only thing that we got control over. Um, and again, that, that goes back to that mental discipline, that competitive maturity to know and understand that to live in the moment, soak it up and, uh, you know, make the most of it. Let's move things over to uh, Jack Murray from TV2. Any questions for Coach? Yeah, Coach, uh, in the last minute of the fourth quarter there, uh, Miami got down to the one-yard line. Just talk about the resiliency of your defense to not allow them to punch it in from there and force that game-time field goal. Again, that, that that's character and toughness that's been built over four years and, and, and the course of this season, right? Like one of our core beliefs is toughness. And we define it as go harder, longer. So, I mean, shoot, the odds are stacked against you. You're on the, the you know, your own one. Your back's against the wall. And, hey, if you're emotionally, mentally, physically tough team, you dig in and you get a stop and you find a way. And in this day and age of college football, like, that's what it, that's what it takes. You know, you get in the red zone. And we had, you know, I think it was three, maybe four possessions that were in the red zone where our defense only allowed field goals, didn't allow touchdowns. Like, that is real toughness. You go harder, longer, you dig in, you get the stop, you find a way, and you live to play another play, you live to fight another day, another down. And shoot, now we get to, you know, call all the prospects, call all the coaches that we were planning on going to see this week and say, hey, I know recruiting's open for everyone else. We got a championship game to go win. We'll see you all the week after. Last one for me, coach. Uh, you're going to the MAC championship the first time Kent State's going there since 2012. Just what does it mean for you and what does it mean for the program as a whole? So we do all this hard work for, right? I mean, like, <laughs> this is what we do it for. You know, every day matters. There's only 12 days that count. You're sitting here at, at 12 and, you know, at seven and five and, and, you're, and you're Mackey's champs. This is what we work so hard for. We need everyone up in Detroit with us wearing their blue and gold. We're going to do some things to honor that 72 team. And uh, I think we're going to dust off these powder blues and let's go see if we can have some fun in Detroit. Let's wrap things up with uh, James Oswald from the Kent State. Questions for Coach? Yeah, Coach, uh, you touched on it a little bit, but, you know, that backfield, two 100-yard runners, it seems like they do that every couple of weeks. Um, just kind of talk about those two guys. I know you always mention how selfish they are, but just, you know, what are they able to do on the field? And they're able to do all the things that they do on the field because of the big boys up front. So they better go take those guys out for some meals this week and take care of them because without those guys in front of them, I, I tell you what, they wouldn't look as glamorous as they do, but – I, they do such a good job of really understanding the schemes, understanding where things are going to hit. I mean, that the second long touchdown run by Xavier Williams was such a tremendous job of winding that thing back and being tight to the gap unit within our gap schemes. And, um, you know, they're, they're just attention to detail. The way they've grown as football players, I think a year ago, you know, they were just kind of out there and they were, they were, they were running backs and, and just their, their God given ability allowed them to have some success, but they've really grown into, understanding the details and the nuances of the position. So based off the fronts, the movements, the pressures, and the things that they're seeing, married with the run concepts that we're calling, they can play with greater efficiency and they don't miss runs. They don't miss holes because of their patience to the line of scrimmage and then both their ability to explode through it and generate big plays, you know? So really proud of both of them. They're each other's biggest cheerleader, you know? And, and, and I mean, it's a nice little one-two punch that we're very fortunate to have. And then you sprinkle in BB, with his big, big back ability, I mean, that that's it, – it's amazing. You know, on the season, Dante's defense has been awesome. Um, you know, Keyshawn Abram had a great game. It seems like you guys always have some receivers to step up. Just kind of talk about that receiver room and just, you know, how do they connect with Dustin? Yeah, I, I mean, again, they're, they're a deep group that over the course of, of building this program and, and the hard work that they put in to continue to develop year in and year out and the hard work that – our staff does on the recruiting trail. You know, we've really been able to accumulate depth of talent within that room, you know, so it makes it really hard on, on defensive coordinators and which way you're going to rock and roll the coverage and who you're going to double because there's a lot of people that are really dangerous. And what I've really been pleased with as the year has gone along, we talked a lot about how, you know, just catching the ball is half the battle. And when you catch it, now you got to run with it. And I thought our guys did a tremendous job with that. You know, Miami was so top-down conscious to make sure that we weren't going to get explosive plays over the top and on their heads. We were forced to throw underneath. We obliged them. And then our guys did a great job making some, you know, people miss tackles and run. And, um, again, that's a testament to the work that they put in. And now they got to go do it again because, again, this is great. I'm glad we won the East. But, again, after 24 hours of good, clean American fun here and celebrating this thing the right way, 
it doesn't matter. And we got to go play another, you know, very dangerous NIU team in a rematch, you know, in, in Fort Field for all of it. So, again, just like we talked about with the plays, got to clear it, refocus, got to celebrate, clear it, refocus, get better on what we put on tape and roll forward, that room included. Last one for me, Coach. Um, you faced NYU before you just mentioned it. Uh, you know, what do you expect to see out of them? And, you know, how do you see you guys respond after, you know, such a close game with them last time? Yeah, I, I mean, that's a, that's a question for tomorrow. Right now, I'm going to enjoy this one. Um, I know we got our hands full, and I know we're going to have to play our best ball. Um, and I know that's some great coach that you're really excited about, Jimmy. But we'll worry about that one tomorrow and solve those problems tomorrow. Right now, just like my players, I'm going to live in the moment. I got a victory cigar with my name on it, and we're going to go handle that situation right now. 